This is basically the gauge. Can I see the bag? It's lightweight. Can you all hear me okay? Great. The bottom line is, is we were talking about how we take the customer from their curry and from the tiller, you know, from the bag and belts, or and then the bag and belts leads to the repair, and then the repair leads to them picking up their vacuum cleaner. Well, as they're picking up their vacuum cleaner, it's imperative that we test that vacuum for quality control purposes. Now, of course, this airflow meter is going to be um, right in your vacuum area. And I like to have the demo floor, the demo area right there and then. So what I'm going to do Put their vacuum cleaner on the floor. It's too powerful, you know, to do it. Uh, what I would do then is uh, this here comes off right here, and it's really simple. I describe what this thing is the same way you, you know, it's the same way that a core they have a dynometer that tests the horsepower. What this game here does is it tests the airflow. The same thing. It's a vacuum horsepower. Different than suction. The other thing I'll do if they ask, and I'm not necessarily going to go into it now because I'm just taking it from the back of the draw. But what I'll do is I use this here, and I think anyone can make one of these. All it takes is clear vacuum tubing you can buy from any back, uh, big beam sells uh, But all you do is put airflow on one side, and something's going to the other side, and a, and a golf ball right there. And this is how I explain airflow and suction. And, uh, you know what I what I do is you know Dice is the one who says it the most that in fact I do suction, correct? So when we're talking about suction, I uh, that's potential power in the vacuum. Uh, airflow is the world cleaning power that deep cleans carpet. So if you're wanting to clean carpet, you need more airflow. The more the better. So what I do is I'll turn the unit on and I'll show them that suction. You see any air movement? Like there's that little plastic ball, right? See how it's not really going anywhere? So you're about to become experts. This is suction. Now you see it. It's airflow. Is that pretty simple? How fast the debris goes from point A to point B. So uh, now we're actually producing airflow. It's suction. And so are your customers. Again, it goes back to the first C, them having confidence in the And the more confidence they have in you, the more they're going to want to buy. So that's what that difference there is, suction and airflow. I mean, anyone can make one of these, but it explains it very well, complicated to most people. All right, so now, put this back here. Now what I'm going to do is put their vacuum cleaner again. If it's a bagless vacuum cleaner, uh, this particular, what this machine's going to do is show the deficiency in cyclonic bagless vacuums. They have terrible airflow. That's why they always talk about they don't lose suction. By the way, do all of you know that there isn't a vacuum cleaner made that's going to lose suction once it's broken or clogged? I mean, that's it in a nutshell. So it's sort of like saying, you know, 7-Up doesn't have, doesn't have caffeine. Well, they never did. It's just a sales ploy and very smart to be done. You know? I mean, and now nobody else wants to go behind them and say, oh, well, you know, our doesn't lose suction either. I mean, you want to be the first, and that's... That's what's good about marketing. Sixty million dollars a year goes along the way. Okay, now we're gonna. So we took the vacuum cleaner from the repair area, and now we want to make sure it works. So here we are on my showroom floor with all these vacuums. Maybe just spent seventy-five bucks because I got the money. And now what I'm going to do is put them on the gauge. And it's really simple. The higher up that goes, the more airflow the vacuum can, the more power. It can. But I'll show you one more thing about HEPA filtration. This is a HEPA filter vacuum cleaner. And because it has a HEPA filter on the exhaust end, which means that the exhaust filter on this is stopping carbon brush emissions, fancy term for those little motor brushes that spin across the armature. But what's going to happen now, what would happen when I pop the HEPA filter off the back? 
So when you add HEPA filters to vacuum, especially bagless vacuum, what happens to your power? We lost the whole tube movement standpoint. Now, if this had a brand new bag in it, it wouldn't pull the corner. But as that bag fills up, what happens to your airflow? It decreases, doesn't it? Really simple. Well, that's the problem with bagless vacuums. You said they don't lose suction. They lose airflow. They lose airflow uh, through the filters that all the air has to go through. And this is just the primary filter that you know, the vacuum and the Dyson, for instance, and the Hoovers, and all of them use the same design. So the primary filter that's supposed to capture all the dirt and debris is foam. Uh, it's not, they can call it HEPA media, or HEPA type of true, and technically it is, but it's like seeing, you know, uh, when we look at the bag system on this one here, we look at the bag system like this, we can see that type of material, but they make these into doctor's masks, correct? So if I put the doctor's mask and seal my mouth, it's going to be effective. But if I have the doctor's mask like this and try to suck through it, am I really getting the HEPA filtration benefit? Absolutely not. And the way that you can show them that their vacuum is HEPA or not HEPA is by, because they're going to believe what's written right on the vacuum, aren't they? But the way that you can show them that it's not, the proof is in the housing. Is that not a spotless housing? It is, isn't it? So we know that. Before the motor, all the dirt is being captured in this HEPA filter bag. And the other advantage of this bag, remember the paper bags? You can only fill them half full. But well, maybe in New York or California, in Montana, where we've got super fine dust, try a quarter full before you start losing tons of airflow. Does that make sense? So the key thing is with this bag, not only do they have the benefit of HEPA filtration, but isn't that a small bag? It is kind of small. I'll tell you that. Yeah. The beauty of this, do you see it written anywhere, fill lines, you can only fill it a quarter full, half full. No, because of the HEPA filtration, techno HEPA filtration technology, you can fill it to the top. Now what is HEPA filtration technology? I'm going to show you this real quick. This is another simple way to show it. I'm going to recycle here, I'm trying to do my thing. Can I see some of that pet stuff? And can I see this up right here? This is the simplest way to explain HEPA filtration technology. Um, in a nutshell, the cloth and electro fiber filaments in that bag, as the air goes through it, it creates a static electric charge that bonds the small particles to the fibers, stopping it from going back out to your breathing space and area. So what I'm going to do here, To show you something. Can you see how this is just floating around? Do you guys remember the science experiments in the physics class where they did pet the cat and all the static electrical charge? Well, in essence, that's the concept of the static chemical filtration system. So here's our cat hair, K POC. And you can see how it just kind of floats around, doesn't go anywhere? Well, check this out. Now watch what happens. What are you noticing? Well, why on earth is that happening? Well, check this out. Oh, what do you know? The HEPA filter bag is literally grabbing, even through the plastic housing. The static charge that's on that bag is so great, and yet again, what do we see? Or don't see? Fine dust. So that's the beauty of the HEPA, HEPA filtration bags. Not only do they get all the dust out, and economically, they're less money than paper bags. Because they can fill these to the top. So they're saving money there. But the coolest thing of all, they're rocking glass proof. And they're even a little bit moisture resistant. You know that? So uh, where the paper bags, what happens if you get them wet? You get dirt through the motor, through the housing, and everything else. So the key in vacuum design, and this is what I'm sharing with my customers, 
his agitation, motor, and filtration system. And what I'm able to do with this simple little demonstration is explain the importance of the motor. Does that make sense? And how much power does it have? And I'll let you know something about this game. It goes from 1 to 20. I know you guys can't see the numbers on the slide. But the bottom line is, if one vacuum's pulling 10 and one's pulling 20, it does not mean that the vacuum cleaner that's pulling 10 or 20 is twice as powerful. One movement on an airflow gauge from there to there is double the power from beneath it. So it exponentially it becomes greater. So if I've got a vacuum cleaner that's pulling 12 and one that's pulling 14, you multiply that by four. I mean, it, it's crazy. Airflow is the heart of what deep, clean sanding grid. And now that being said, uh, and also have with this gauge, ever heard of an arc? Well, how much airflow do they have? How on earth do you test an arc? Toss something on the base plate? Well, I have a, you know, right yeah, here we go. Obviously, this is a direct motor system. It's similar to the arc. And there you go. What I'm able to do with this device is actually measure airflow from the exhaust of a vacuum also. So what I do is put this here, this here, and now what I'm able to do, and I'll let you in on a secret, you want to make sure that there is no debris under that nozzle when you do this test. I have a separate piece of plastic, I set this in a little frame, but what it allows me to do is measure finally how much power does this really have versus a canister or a sealed water system, right? So all I've got to do is take this, put it right here, kick this on, make sure there's no dirt underneath it or it'll shoot all over you. Don't ask me how I know that. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Now you know why uprights do so well. And the other thing about uprights with direct motor systems is the closer you can put the motor to the nozzle, the more efficient that design is going to be. So that's why they have that nozzle so close, that's why it produces so much airflow. It just has to shoot through the motor up the back. There's advantages and disadvantages of that on the repair end, like breaking the engine or something. But uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Now, so what this machine, what this actually does is measure both the airflow and the suction. And once I've done that, this is the most important part of it. I don't believe in high pressure. I don't want to tell somebody their vacuum is terrible or bad or whatever. So what I said, well, let's put it on the gauge and measure the motor power. Let's, when we look at the brush roll design, is it metal, is it plastic? Do you have pet hair? Do you have long hair? All those things are going to get through that power nozzle, through that motor, through the brush roll, and they can affect how long the vacuum's going to last. So the critical thing is, is it a metal brush roll, plastic brush roll, or a pet hair, dirt hair? And there are some new classes that they've come up with that are amazingly strong, and if it's designed properly, they can keep the dirt and hair out of it. This particular one is really impressive to me. Uh, this is actually made in Germany uh, by Wesselworks. It's a company that actually makes it. But you can see what they did that was really brilliant, is they put a huge washer, much larger than the end cap, so dirt and hair can't work its way back into the bearing end. And the beauty of this particular vacuum work um, you know, about 20% of our business is bare floor and throw rocks, and that, that's, it's actually growing. What's nice about this particular vacuum cleaner is it, it addresses both, and it's the first power nozzle that I've ever seen you can actually run on a bare floor. And you know how sometimes you have the linoleum where it's crusty, and you get stuff built onto it? Straight suction alone is not going to clean that. Where with this particular vacuum cleaner, uh, the brush roll, will actually help pull it right off. And you see the narrowness of that brush roll, how skinny it is? The problem with all the other power models that I've seen is their intake is rather large. So they love, it's just more surface area to grab the throw rod. But it also gives you less airflow, because the larger that intake, the, less, the more airflow you're going to lose at the nozzle end. But this one here looks beautiful. I'm just going to kick it on here. 
and I'm leaving the power nozzle on from part, here's the dirt floor first, and you can just see no scatter behind, right? You know what I mean? Normally when you, you use it with the brush roll on, you see everything getting washed out. And the reason why we use the sand, it's hard to pick up. It's dense, it's heavy. And so I can transition from dirt floor right to carpet. And I mean, you want to talk about an awesome brush roll. You really did a good job of impacting that stuff. That's pulling it right out. I mean, we can even go here. This thing has so much power, you see it pull it in from the top. Isn't that cool? But the beauty of this particular nozzle is how small and compact it is. And I can go low underneath places. I've got the high, low reach. I can adjust this to my grandkid to vacuum if they want. And the other cool thing about this particular vacuum is when I'm transitioning, When I'm transitioning to the to the crevice, this is a triple tool actually. It's a dusting brush crevice tool and a, and a dusting brush. Uh, so what I'm able to do, here's my crevice tool that I can get. And the wand comes right off too. So if I don't want to bend down anywhere, you'll also notice that this wand sort of have a, has a crevice portion cut into it. So I can't actually use that alone. We're going into the edges and around the corners and it still pulls everything in. But this does give me the crevice tool. And what I really like about it is for ceiling fans and blinds, you can do a partial cut and the blades and the fans will fit right in there. We're gonna get you can see. And also, you know how you have couches that are round and pet hairs all over it? You can actually customize this and an arch that's gonna clean it. Or if you have kids or a styrofoam on your leg, <laughs> you can suck it off of that. You can actually, it's like a contour Brush. The other cool thing about it is it uses the Venturi effect. You notice how the intake is smaller uh, than where the port is in the port? Uh -huh. Well, they reduce the intake by two thirds. That triples the airflow. And the other cool thing about this with pet hair is it's self cleaning. It's an all natural brush, it's not going to scratch anything, but it pulls everything right into the brush. So those little funky things that spin and whatever. Uh, they do a terrible job because you've got to pull all the hair out of them if they haven't already broken. With this one here, there's no moving parts. I mean, in theory, you know. And then, of course, if I want to use the dusting brush, and this is really important when you use this brush. You'll have customers say the brush doesn't fit. You've got to be a piece. If it, that's not a perfect piece on it, if it's even off that much, and they try to put it on, they're going to say it won't fit on. It just falls off. But if you think, you know, peace, baby. It's going to fit right on there, and now I'm able to reach up high. And because of the steel and aluminum construction, it's insanely lightweight. And that's basically it. Was there anything that you want to add, Greg? Because I, I want you to finish up. He's going to, Greg's going to show you a couple more little things with it. Um, he, uh, this is actually his vacuum. He's the uh, one that put together the base vacuum. And uh, that's, that's what we're doing. Facebook. In addition to the, 